Five reasons why our Stronghold Iron Fence is better than the competition. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. We understand that after a few hours of shopping online, all the iron fences start to look the same. How can you tell the quality fences from the terrible ones? Price is not always the best indicator, nor are pretty online photos. So today, I'm going to go over five specific things that make our Stronghold Iron Fences better than the competition. The first thing that makes our Stronghold Iron Fence better than the competition is that we weld on cast iron finial tips at no extra cost. If you're not sure what a finial tip is, it's this decorative piece on top of the vertical pickets. This piece is solid cast iron and it's welded onto the steel fence and gate pickets. It's a small portion of the fence, but it goes a long way in giving the fence a more regal and authentic appearance. So our Stronghold Iron gets you an authentic and solid cast iron finial that's welded onto the picket. Let's take a look at what the two options you get from our competitors are. The first option that you get with a vast majority of our competition is what's called a pinched or a crimp tip picket. It looks like this piece here next to my welded on finial tip. It's named as such because they stick the end of a hollow picket into a machine that smashes the picket together and then cuts it into this shape. It gives the fence a low quality appearance. It instantly gives away that it's an off the shelf price point fence. It doesn't evoke that authentic and historic look that most people buying an iron fence want. Why does everyone else build their fences with these pinch tips? Easy, it's cheaper and simpler than hand welding on 20 iron finials like we do. It's a way to cut corners and costs. The other thing you get with this pinch tip picket is a much thinner and pointier end. If you have small kids or dogs, these pinch tips have a much smaller contact patch that pokes harder than the rounded top of our cast iron finials. The second option you'll get with our competitors is a press-on or glue-on finial tip like this. They'll be plastic or die cast instead of iron like ours. To add insult to injury, these cheap add-on pieces are almost always an upcharge over the standard panel price. Lots of times we see lower quality panels with these cheap add-on finials costing as much or more than our panels that are better quality with true iron finials welded on. Now, while these little imposters get the job done visually from a distance, there's two major downsides to them. The first is that easy on means easy off. If you've ever seen a fence that's missing half its finial tips, those are cheap add-on pieces that the kids pulled off or broke off once they realized they popped off. The second is that the cheap add-on finials are made of different materials and coated separately from the fence or gate. Our welded on iron fence tips go through the same cleaning and powder coating with the panel in one solid piece so it's consistent coloring and the same finish. The cheapy stick-on ones will look okay new, but in one to three years, they can fade to a much different color than the fence panels, rails, and pickets. This is especially true of the plastic pieces that are not painted or powder coated. Once these cheap stick-on pieces begin to fade to a different color from the fence line, they really stick out like a sore thumb. The second item that makes a Stronghold Iron Fence better than the competition is more robust and better construction of the fences and gates. Just like the finial tips, this is another place competitors can hide cost-cutting measures that aren't always readily apparent. When we make our fence panels and gates, we punch our horizontal rails, feed the pickets through, and then weld them from underneath. On our gates, we use U-frame standard for additional reinforcement. Let's grab some pieces and take a closer look at why these two construction techniques map. Let's start with the punched rail construction I mentioned. What a lot of competitors do is called a layover or railroad style of construction. That means that they take a horizontal rail, square stock, or flat stock, and then weld the pickets on perpendicular like this to the back of it here and here. It gets the job done, but then you have a fence that looks okay on one side, and then the other side just exposed welds. Beyond looks, it can also be a very weak construction method, especially if the rails are made of thin flat stock. You have much less bend resiliency in this type of construction. If enough pressure is put into that panel and that rail bows outward, it can at worst fail completely and fold in half. At best, it's still gonna start cracking the welds to the pickets at all the connection points. What we do is use this punched horizontal railing for our fencing gates. We feed the picket through the punch in the rail and then weld it from underneath. If you look at our finished piece here, you can see that it not only gives a uniform look on both sides of the fence, but also hides the welds underneath for a cleaner look. The shape of the railing we use is also beneficial for better strength and bend resiliency. If you look at the side of our rail here, you'll see it's a channel with a rounded edge. Not only does that rounded edge look nicer, but it's stronger than a hard 90 degree or knife edge. So that punched horizontal rail gives a cleaner look as well as a stronger construction on your fence panels and gates. Speaking of gates, the U-frames we use around our gates go a long way in making a stronger and sag-proof gate. Unlike a fence panel that remains stationary and doesn't have a lot of force put on it, gates see all sorts of leverage forces. Even when hanging closed, the gate is being held by the hinges on one side with more force being exerted on the frame. 
When you open the gate, you also have that opening motion, as well as any force being put on the gate transferred to the entire piece as well. Throw in some resonance of someone slamming the gate, or slipping and grabbing the gate and putting a ton of force on it, to kids hopping on the gate for a ride, and the strength of that gate's frame becomes real important. Let's go grab a few pieces from the shop to show visually why that U-frame matters. Here we have what you get standard from most fence and gate makers. We call this an open frame gate. The frame consists only of a single piece right and left, and the only thing joining the two frame pieces are the horizontal rails. So on this gate, if you only have two horizontal rails, that means you only have four small welds holding that gate and frame together. Not a whole lot of support. That's why this type of gate construction can sag over time. Now if we look at my Stronghold Iron Gate here, you can see the U-frame comes down each side and continues across the bottom. So that name comes from the U-shape those three pieces form. Not only do you have this welded in frame reinforcement across the bottom, but you also have all of your pickets welded to the frame itself. So unlike that open frame gate being held together by four total welds, our Stronghold Iron U-frame gate here is being held together by nine picket welds to the bottom frame, the top rail welds, plus the strength of that frame going across the bottom that's attached to both sides and completely welded as well. That's much more solid than the open frame gate and why our Stronghold Iron Gates will never sag. That's important on any gate, but imagine how much more rigidity that's going to build into a much wider driveway gate leaf. That could be upward of 15 welds on a 10 foot wide leaf plus that U-frame reinforcing our gate leaf. Now jumping back to our competitor's driveway gate with the open frame, you only have four wimpy welds on a 10 foot wide gate leaf. That's why we don't have to use any silly construction crutches on our gates like wheels on the ends or cross bracing. They're strong enough to hold the gate entirely. The third item that makes our Stronghold Iron Fence better than the competition is better built and nicer looking hardware. Now in the grand scheme of things, we realize that nicer hardware like fence panel brackets and post caps are a small piece of the overall fence and gates. However, much like those welded on finial tips we previously discussed, these small items go a long way in making the fence look much more authentic and beautiful. Let's start with the fence brackets. These are the pieces that are going to connect your fence panels to the posts that go in ground. What you get from most competitors is what's called a strap bracket. It's simply a thin piece of stamped steel that wraps around or butts up to the post. While this will get the job done, there are a few things we don't like about those stamped steel brackets. First, they're very thin. They bend easily and if you get rust on any, it won't take long to eat through them. Second is they don't fully encapsulate the end of the rail. So you can often see daylight and gaps between the rail, bracket, and post. Lastly, they're like the pinch tip finials we mentioned earlier. They instantly give away that it's an off the shelf, get the job done type of fence. Especially the wraparound type that are tough to keep level and aligned down that entire fence line. What we use for our fence brackets is a cleaner looking and much heavier duty cast iron shoe bracket. These cast iron brackets are thicker and much heavier duty than the stamped steel type of bracket. The cast iron brackets arrive loose and slide onto the ends of the rail. When installed, the bracket stays tucked in close around the rail and on the inside face of the post. They're both better looking and more inconspicuous than those stamped steel brackets that wrap around the post. This gives you a much cleaner appearance, but also still leaves you the adjustability in the one inch depth of the bracket. We also don't cut corners on the post caps or gate frame cap hardware. Whereas our competitors will use cheap plastic, aluminum, or stamped steel pieces for these, we use true cast iron hardware. Whether it's the smaller gate frame caps or a larger ball and standard style post caps, they're made from sand cast iron. They are stout, they're heavy, and much more authentic looking. The fourth item that makes our Stronghold Iron Fence better than the competition is making galvanized and powder coated pieces that carry a 25 year warranty. The thing that gives steel and iron components a bad name is rust. We've seen all sorts of bad practices from competitors. These range from horrible paint over bare metal to just primer bases over low grade powder coating. There are two key components of a quality finish, the rust inhibitor and the top finish. The most important part of your iron fence and gate finish is the layer you don't even see. We use the tried and true rust inhibitor of hot dip galvanization on our raw stock. By dipping the stock, we get a coating of rust inhibiting galvanization on the inside and outside of your pieces. There's a reason why galvanization is used on roofing nails, metal framing construction, and vehicle parts. It just works. That galvanized coating is why we can confidently offer our 25 year warranty on the Stronghold Iron line. Now some competitors will use a simpler spray on rust inhibitor that may protect the outside, but it doesn't protect the inside of the post pickets and gate frames that then rust out on you over time and by that point it's too late. The other key component of your finish is your top coating or the layer you can see on the outside. We use a high quality TGIC poly based powder coating with UV fade inhibitors. Quality powder coating is key. Powder coat is much like wall paint for your home. There's a wide range of interior paint that ranges from the cheap $20 a gallon paint for rental units 
up to the $60 a gallon quality paint. They're both paint, but the coverage, look, and durability of the higher end paint is going to be noticeable over time. Powder coating's no different. Low quality powder coat finishes will look okay when new, but fade to black or gray in a few seasons or get a chalky appearance on the surface of your pieces that won't come off. Lastly, don't forget to ask about a warranty. We offer a 25 year warranty on our Stronghold Iron Line. That includes the finish peeling or blistering off. We've seen some places offer no warranty or a very short warranty like one to five years. Any warranty under 10 to 15 years is a surefire sign you're likely gonna be refinishing that fence or dealing with rusted out components. One of the biggest perks of an iron and steel fence is its longevity. If you wanted something that was only gonna last five to 10 years and required a ton of maintenance, you could have got a wood fence. Don't pay good money for an iron and steel fence only to have it fail prematurely. Ask about that warranty and what it covers. The fifth and final item that makes our Stronghold Iron Fence better than the competition is our customer service. I know, I know, stop cringing, don't close that video window. I know every company says they have the best customer service. No one's gonna say, eh, our customer service is so-so. We feel we have the best customer service because we have truly knowledgeable salespeople and we wanna work through your project in detail with you. It's probably to our detriment that we don't have a shopping cart on our website. However, having one is a recipe for disaster with materials like this. These projects can be complicated, and most folks aren't fence and gate experts. Why not have someone knowledgeable help you through the process? We don't want our customers getting frustrated as they keep having to order and return items they didn't realize they needed or didn't need to begin with. Not to mention spending ungodly amounts of money on additional shipping. We want to work with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure what we are shipping you is exactly what you need. Instead of working with some hourly clerk that is reading out of the catalog, you're working with a salesperson that has a minimum experience of 10 years in our group here, many of them with direct installation experience. Heck, chances are good that if you call or email in, you'll be working one-on-one -on -one with me. It's not uncommon for us to spend long phone calls answering questions and to work through several iterations of the quote throughout the planning process. We want to ask you questions and have you ask us questions so we can get a feel for exactly what you need. We'll request a layout sketch from you so we aren't going off assumptions. With that, we'll work up an itemized quote for you and often give some notes on it with it as well. We've worked through solutions on layout issues, eliminating waste, and even offering options and opinions on what will work best. That's where an experienced sales staff with real-world skills comes in handy. We feel pretty confident you aren't going to get the level of detail and time from our competitors that we offer to our customers. So there's five reasons why we think our Stronghold Iron is better than what you're getting from our competition. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenceshop.com. Want more information on why that rust inhibiting galvanization is key on an iron fencing gate? Check out this video we did. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.